Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. I'm here at the Hollywood Museum on Highland and Sunset in the heart of Hollywood in this historic Max Factor building. And waiting to be profiled are actress Karen Morrow and artist John Eden. Award-winning actress Karen Morrow was born in Chicago and raised in Des Moines, where she went to Catholic schools, <laughs> and then Clark University in Duquesne. Duquesne? Dubuque. No, 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 Dubuque, Dubuque, Dubuque Iowa. Dubuque. What's Duquesne? Was it there, too? Think, no, no, Duquesne is, is down south, I think. Simply I don't know. South. You've seen her in TV and uh, a lot on the L.A. stages yeah. and, of course, on Broadway. So in many productions, she's been the star. She's included in the Tony Award winning uh, Drood Mystery. <laughs> mystery. Well, they changed the name. It originally, it was oh, Mystery of Edwin Drood. Yes. And then people kept referring to it as Drood, so they would say Drood, Drood. But now it's still the Mystery of Edwin but Drood. But I remember it as the Mystery sure. of Edwin Drood. But sure. I guess it ran a long time, did it? It ran almost two years. Yeah, it was pretty long. It was pretty huh? good. It yeah. had started in the summer, so I don't think they considered that part of the run, in the um, park. Is that, I remember oh, Joe did. Papp used to do shows oh, in the park in the summer. Joe Papp was great. Oh, I just, I worshipped him. I worshiped so you him. started with him there? In no, this, oh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I was doing something else for him at that time. I was doing a, a, an original show called Gallery, and uh, he was sponsoring that, and he had hoped that that would go on to something because it was written by the same uh, lyricist, Ed Kleban, the same lyricist of oh. Chorus Line. Oh. And Ed wanted to do his own music and wanted to um, wanted to bring stuff out of his trunk. And so he brought his stuff out of his trunk and got a wonderful cast and we workshopped it and everything. But at that time, they were doing Drood. And oh. yeah, at the same time. Oh. So then, but, but I didn't, because I wasn't in the original. Audition? Yes. To get in? Sure. You had to audition. Oh, sure. Are you kidding me? <laughs> With that sure. voice? Oh, aren't you sweet. Well, the voice was always okay. They liked the voice. They wanted to see if I could do the Cockney accent and all of that. Oh, and to see how'd how would you do that? It's the only accent I could do. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, I think so. Now, if you're going to ask me to do it, I, I don't know, I would say. That's what I would do. But how would you do that the whole time on stage? Oh. Well, not, not that much because the audience would never understand me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad enough when I go to the theater and I can't understand what anybody's doing. I mean, truly. I know. One of the things we said, New York loves you. Los Angeles loves you. We have you here, though, because you live here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the audiences must be different to you, are they? I'm, I'm older now that I that I'm out here. I, I think uh, yes, yes, I think they are. Just being in the audience in New York is different. However, by the time I get around to seeing a Broadway show now, it's been open for a while, so it's mostly out of towners uh, that are right. coming. So it is, it is different, but. Certainly. When I went back east uh, in the National Company of Showboat, yes, uh, everywhere we went across the United States, people would stand at the end and they would just, oh, and the tears, and I would cry listening at the end <laughs> until we got to the East Coast. <gasps> oh. This is with people in the audience. And just stare at you. And I thought, and the production was just as good. It was Hal Prince's production. It was just as good. And I thought, they're used to being critics mm. back there. That's their job. The New York audiences and the Boston audiences and the New, uh, New Haven audiences, their job is to be critical. They're all the same, huh? Yes. Really, Isn't they're much, much more reserved. Here, oh my God. All you have to do is go, hi, and oh, we love you. At the Amundsen, <laughs> I went to see, was it the Amundsen? Uh, where was Fela? 
Phelan oh, yeah, wasn't it great? Yes, it was at the Amundsen. The people did everything but run up on the stage and dance. I know. I was jumping in the aisle. Except that everywhere Fela played. I saw yes. it in New York did twice. Did you? Yes, and it was like that. The audience really did love it. But it was predominantly an ethnic audience. Sure. And so they were reacting to well, what was too. going on. Here, here too. too. And of course, I went right along with them because... <laughs> well, because there we were, right? There was permission. Yes. Do you know what I mean? They gave us permission to do that. One of the things that you do here, and I, I want to just get this in because we can talk forever, is you teach. Oh, you yeah. teach people how to audition. Yes. And you teach people... What else do you teach? Well, uh, I, I have a college audition workshop. That's what, um, And that's at UCLA every summer. And only high school seniors are allowed to come and do that. And they come from all over the world. Oh, they're high school. They're high I wondered if any accomplished actors came to that. No, no, I mean, but then I do another class for grown-ups. I do, you do two you classes do? for grown-ups, yes. Oh. And they, they come there if they're going to do a cabaret act. They come if they're going to do an audition for something, and they try, you know, in front of us, in front of me. And, and then, then you do critique? Yeah, yeah, kindly. Kindly. <laughs> I know it. It's very difficult sometimes. Not like that. What was it? Master class? I didn't see it. Uh, where she it. was so mean to the students. Okay, you're through. You're through. <laughs> I've seen those kind of classes, though, um, with people that you don't know, that you've never heard of. And oh my gosh, I find that so awful. I work so hard. I just came back from Nebraska, the University of Nebraska, where did I you did teach a, there? a master class. I also performed there, too, with, uh, with two Broadway composers. And, oh, uh, we're doing what? What'd you do? The, the, so the boys, great. the boys, they're 40 years old, so to me, they're boys. Right. Uh, Matt Sklar and Chad Beglin wrote Elf, the musical, uh -huh. and they wrote uh, Wedding Singer, the musical. And so they and I, under the auspices of, of ASCAP, went to um, the University of Nebraska for a conference music theater conference, and writing teams came in to audition their wares, their, their show, oh, so, for us. Oh, so Have you ever you, been to any of those here at, the, no, at Disney or at DreamWorks? No, I love to do Stephen that. Stephen Schwartz is in charge of all of that. And you critique what's yes, coming in? Yes, the two in? boys oh, and I. Oh, that's so great. That was the last part. We critiqued them, and then they had two days to rewrite and then come back. Oh, really? But we also did a show of their material with the students, Oh. And then I was in that show, but the students then took a master class with me. And I have to tell you, the talent at the University of Nebraska is extraordinary. But how, how extraordinary is that, that you can go all around the U.S. and oh, find that? I am so grateful because we've been... When I was traveling with ASCAP and with Jerry Herman. Oh, Jerry Herman. Jerry, said, we went, Let me say, okay. she'll sing the hell out of <laughs> whatever you give her. Oh, you got that quote? Yes, oh, I did. What did you do with so him? Sweet. Well, Jerry, uh, actually, just his show, it wasn't Jerry's Girls. I auditioned for Jerry so many years, <laughs> I mean, starting in 1961. And he was always kind of a fan. And he decided to go around the country and do these conferences with colleges. Oh. And he brought myself, uh, Jason Grah, and Paige O'Hara. Oh, Jason Grah is so great. was funny? Yeah, we he's had so him on talented. years ago. It oh. was so great. He's, and he's wonderful to travel with, me. I say. And Paige O'Hara, who was the, uh, the original oh, Belle right. in the movie. Right. And then we would do Jerry's material for all these people. And oh. then Jerry would come out at the end and like a rock star. They would greet him. And then I would do a master class. But that's why he kids. said, because you were singing his songs. His songs, Boom, sure. Boom, right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Good he, songs. He, you know, his favorite singer was, or, or the, the, his the, favorite singer was Karen No, Morrow. no, no. His, <laughs> he, he loved what Edie Gourmet did oh, with If He Walked Into love My, my Edie Life. Gourmet. And I thought about him when she passed away oh. because he was so grateful to her for doing that number and making it the number one hit. So, I mean, between her and uh, Louis Armstrong, Louis Armstrong, uh, who did Hello Doll, Hello Doll. He that was did his, that before right? before the show opened, so the show was immediately a hit. And the same thing with with Mame when she, when Edie did that song. And Edie did the song. What was it? If he walked into my life. Oh, if he walked into my yeah. life. Yeah, that could bring tears to your life. Oh. When it's done well, oh, it is really, really something. Beautiful. And of course, he loved that kind of song. Well, but how much singing did you take? Was there singing in your family? Yes. Oh, yes. there was. Yes. <laughs> so. My mom and dad were oh, both the, singers. Oh, yes. they were? They were opera singers <gasps> oh. in Chicago. 
Oh. But uh, my dad was on radio. Um, I was trying to think, WGN, WBBM. He was, do you remember, no, you're not old enough, but Jack Armstrong. Yes, I remember, The radio remember, show. Yes, yes. He was one of the Hudson High boys. Oh, We're he We're the was. Hudson High boys. And have you tried Wheaties? Best breakfast food in the land. Oh, he yes. was one of those guys. Oh, that's, and then the and your mother sang. And my mother was, uh, she did concerts across the country. Oh, that's no with, wonder. But you can act, too. Because you were in the Jim Neighbors show. Oh, you were yeah. in, uh, oh. I, I did All I did those a lot of TV those. shows, what were they well, all? They were all pilots. Ladies, man. I did a thing called Friends, which was not the friends that we know. I did a lot. For, and I did, of course, the Love Boat. Oh, and, mur and yeah, and Love Boat and Murder, and murder she, wrote. she Wrote. Right. I know. It's been a while since I've done you some You don't of do those. those anymore? Well, I haven't been asked. Oh. <laughs> but those, but you were acting. Oh, sure. TV acting, yeah. stage acting, <laughs> but I did a couple of shows here that were pure drama, and I I lost 20 pounds. I remember I did one called Oh God, what I can't think of the name of it, but a woman who was very funny but was a um, agoraphobic who was scared of going out oh, of the house, oh. and she eventually you know did drastic things, and I was just a wreck to try to. Do it to, right, to do that, to, to do, do it correctly. So you had to lose weight. I didn't. I just did. I it was stressed, pure it was stress. stress. Oh, I looked great. I went to Hawaii. Oh, I got my beats. Right. Went to Hawaii right after it. I know. With, with your mother being an opera singer, why didn't you go into that? How did you decide what to sing? Well, when they would sing at home, I'd go. Uh, oh no! It really? was one of those. Well, it was highfalutin. Ooh, 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 that stuff. I mean, they were better than that. But I, I would think loved, so. Did you go to? Did you sing at Clark University? Sure, Clark. Yeah. Oh, you did. Yeah. Not as much as I did at the boys' college. See, that was an all-girls school. And the nuns wanted to. They thought that I was too much of a show-off. Oh, I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but the boys, the priest over at the boys' school, knew oh, that I was you. over there, and he needed a comedian for his musicals. How great! So he was the one that brought me into all this. I owe him everything. And you did five seasons with the New York City Center. City Center, yeah. When they were what doing, was it? It was a Broadway revival. They were all Broadway revivals, and a lot of the the composers were still around. Richard Rodgers was still around. Oh. Uh, Alan J. Lerner. And what was it, just a series of songs? Oh, no, no, the, the musicals. Oh, you actually we did the musicals? We redid the musicals, yeah. Oh, you actually did. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, each season had three musicals, and there were five seasons. Yeah. Wow. With, oh. with different casts, but I was usually in every season. Wow. With the oh, so Oklahoma oh. and Carnival and... Uh, uh, Brigadoon. Those things bring me to Hollywood Revisited. Hollywood Revisited. There they are, those cuties. Aren't yes, they cute? which those is are real. Greg Schreiner's. Yes, God um, bless him. His I owe production. him my life. He's so wonderful. He is, but you know, he, and he's my he accomplice for my class here. Oh, he, he's the most brilliant pianist, right? He is right? so good. And he, he was doing this show and around town, and I said, are those real costumes? Yes, he said they are. Because he owns the real costumes. He owns costumes. almost 400 of them. Right. So Hollywood, Re uh, Hollywood Revisited is a tribute in costume. And song. And song. Yes. So you wear the costume. And sing. And sing. <laughs> but I begged him to let me do that because. You begged him? Well, I saw the show. He was show. so happy to well, have you. That happened later. Well, we love great. Greg and we love Hollywood Revisited. Oh, it's so good. And he continues it. It goes he and goes. He does, and, and goes. he changes the costumes and he's changing the concept. Now we're doing a different concept on the ship. In November, we're going to. Oh, it's it's a uh, three week cruise, but we don't join it until the end. We go to the Caribbean, and I then know. I I do. And you the stand other... for a week, ten days. No, you don't stand that long. No, well, sometimes we do. This one is a shorty. Oh, this, this one's is a shorty. Six. And he's doing most of the work. Not only is he bringing his show, but he's playing for me for my little act. Oh, and for he's years. playing for the woman who is doing the Marilyn Monroe. Because he owns imitating. all those Marilyn he owns Monroe her costumes, things. and he's also doing a lecture. So the poor man is... Uh, he's fabulous. Oh, and he's, he's so good-natured and And I'm kind. so glad you came on because Thank you. he said, you've got to get Karen. And we got her. Thank you. Karen, thank you, thank so, you so very much. much. This one's great. Thank you, Gary. And we'll be right back with John Eden. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum on Highland Avenue in the heart of Hollywood. Today, we're back with artist John Eden, 
who was raised in what he calls CalArts country, otherwise known as Santa Clarita Valley. He earned a BFA at San Francisco Art Institute in film, uh, a master's at Cal State Northridge, and his Master of Fine Arts in Painting at USC. His work has been exhibited uh, in California galleries, and there was a little space in time from the 80s to now. But when I met him, it was in 2012 and 13 at Catherine Cohn's gallery, where she showed two beautiful pieces. She had a show called Rouge, 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 <laughs> Rouge, and you don't know Jack, who was Jack Brogan. Right. So tell us how you got involved in that. <clears throat> First of all, why did you take film? Uh, because it was the thing to do. It was the medium of the future. And uh, the problem was that during that time, I took a painting class. And then from that point on, I was really kind of addicted to to paint. And I just I realized that film was more of an ensemble situation. And I'm more of a, a loner. Oh, more of a loner, which is an artist. But right. you also took intermedia in, in, intermedia Yes, kind of uh, 2D, 3D oh, uh, that kind sculpture, of thing. Oh. and here I am back in sculpture. But, but that worked for you. It did that work did. for me. Did the film work for you? Um, not really. I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a real tie-in with my work in film. I'm, so you followed your heart going to... The Art <laughs> Institute, yes. And, and doing painting. Yes. Yes, I do. I mean, I took the one class uh, from Mary O'Neill, a painting teacher there, wonderful woman, and she just, uh, it just blew me away, and I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. And why did it take me so long between when you went to school to Catherine Cohn's gallery, um, where you, you were in two shows with her? Well, in, in the late 80s, I was uh, showing with Ace Gallery here in L.A. And, and what were you showing there? I was showing paintings uh, principally. And the, the funny story about that is I had one sculptural piece in, in the show. And I was living in, in downtown at the Citizens Warehouse. And my neighbor was John McCracken, oh, who was the it? plank artist. <laughs> and, and he told me to stick with painting, don't do sculpture. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but the, the piece you had at Katie's gallery, Red Coffin, reminded me a lot of McCracken's It was work. an homage to, to John, oh, actually. Oh, good for me. <laughs> oh, it was, because it reminded me of that. Interesting story about that, because I started it two years uh, before he passed away. I didn't know that he was, uh, oh. that he was sick at all. And uh, I worked with Jack Brogan on that because Jack did a lot of uh, work for jo John's work. And he knew the exact color that I wanted. I wanted that Corvette red that John McCracken so famously used. And, and his planks were laid against the wall. Correct. And your coffin stood alone, right? Standing. And, yes. And also leaning against the was wall, which was a real tongue-in-cheek reference to John. But I, I love the guy. I love his work. And uh, it wasn't a send-up necessarily. Well, you know, I was, I, it, the, the faceted element of the coffin really kind of spoke to Cubist, Cubist sculpture. And, and uh, jewels. It yes. looked like jeweled facets to me. And uh, so I was just, uh, I started out, I wanted to do a homage to John, and he was interested in the doors of perception. He was, he was a very interesting character, and, um, and so I wanted to f use those uh, facets and reflect the room back into the piece, and so the viewers could be part of the piece as they walked around. And the, and the piece we're talking about is the show called You Don't Know Jack, right? No, that, oh, that was, was the Rouge. That was the Rouge show. The Rouge show. What else was in that? Did you have another piece in that? No, just one piece in that. And, and who was included in that show? Um, Shepard Farley, um, uh, John Van Hammersfield, the oh, guy that right. did the John Beatles. Van Hammersfield and, and Shepard Ferry and a Cavalier. Cav was Cosmo in that? No, Cosmo was in one of the other uh, Jack shows. <laughs> one of the other Jack shows. <laughs> right. There were two homages to Jack. Tell us about Jack Brogan. Jack Brogan is a man that I've known for a long time. Uh, 
he was he was close friends with uh, Edith Bauman and uh, Lucius Hudson when they were married and uh, Lucius passed away and I was friends with Lucius and so I know Edith oh. knew Edith through and we've had a long friendship and then when they married I got to know Jack and Edith Bauman is a brilliant painter she certainly is she's such a colorist and she just makes everything work it just pops off the canvas we've had her on the show oh great and we adore her work we I mean it's like so stimulating, isn't it? It certainly is. I agree. So here you are. You're painting at Ace, but Craig is telling you not to be a not to give up painting. Right. And you gave up painting, I think. Well, I I think what I I know I actually I kept painting. I went into my studio and for a ten year period I just kept painting. Ah. And I thought that if I made really really great paintings, that somebody would come and see that they were great and. Uh, but nobody came. But that's what happens <laughs> to an artist, that's right? That's right. If you're not working every day and painting every day, you're not an artist. That's right. You, uh, I was, I was, I was working and painting, but I wasn't out there on the street getting my art out there, and I needed to do that. That was a, that was a problem that I had. Is that what happened between the 2000s and and um, the 80s because yes, you, you were like showing a lot into the late 80s. Correct. Then you started showing again in the 2000s. Correct. And, uh, and but you then were painting all the time. I was painting <laughs> all the time. I was building my studio in the, f in the first part of the 90s, but I was painting. And, uh, but it just, uh, I, after a hundred years of abstraction, I, I think it's really hard to be original with abstract painting. It's a very tough, that's a tough it's, issue. It's a very tough issue because people have to understand it. Even if it's abstract, they have to understand what right. you're doing, right? Right. And one of the things that I think was a balance to you, you say, or interesting in that abstract balance, was going to Las Vegas and watching that. Is it the Cosmopolitan Hotel? What hotel it was, was that? The city center. It was the it's, city center, yeah. the new part. The new, part the new that, hotel. Yes. And Jack was working on the Henry Moore sculpture? Yes, I was working with Jack on that sculpture, and we were... Uh, it was right out in front of the entry, I think, Yes, right? exactly. The reception. And the reception had a Maya Lin. Correct. And, and I was really taken by the Maya Lin because it was called Silver River. It's beautiful. And it's, it's a topographical rendering of the Colorado River as, as it snakes through the Grand Canyon. And if anything really kind of reflects Las Vegas, in my mind, is, is the water, the river that feeds uh, the city and also the boulder dam that generates the electricity for all the beautiful lights there. So it's really all predicated on that river. But it was very abstract. It was totally abstract. And so, but what you're saying is, did that influence you then to go back well, and work? Well, no, it didn't influence me, but what it did is it reinforced uh, what I was doing with this piece. I had, this was, I had two, two bouts Hold with head and neck us. cancer. Oh, you did? Yes. Because I read that, I, I mean, when I was looking at your bio, you talked about actually using the CT scans as art. Correct. And I wanted to do the traditional uh, portrait, self-portrait, the artist's self-portrait. And I thought, what more appropriate thing to do is to use a CT scan, a real scan of my head, and, and then make fun of my own mortality because I just thought, you know, I'm just going to poke back. Was, I'm not gonna... was that part of the time when you weren't working or when you weren't showing? Or no, no, that was, that was when, I, when I came out. I was like fighting for my life. And, really? And it really, uh, you know, I really realized that I needed to be an artist and do this and get out there and so get my work out. So that was a revelation. It was. It, I, was, <laughs> it was a revelation. It was, a, it was a, an odd gift. Very if, interesting. if cancer can be a gift, it was an odd gift. Tell me um, where this was. This is this was, the Pale series? Uh, no, no. This is uh, this was a piece that has never been shown, but it's exactly the same image that was in you. You don't know Jack, his oh, okay. first show. I see. But it was the black. I had a black sphere in that one. And in so that it's, show. And did Jack, does Jack make them? No, no. I make these. Oh, you make these. Did you so, make the coffin? I made the coffin and Jack painted it for me, but I, I, I fabricated it. I see. And then I'm going to just show a couple okay. of these. Okay. 
And uh, yes, and that's, uh, that's uh, the brass coating, copper plating. Is this a copper plated uh, an STL? It's a it's a computer generated piece. And and this one I call a bell. I yes, don't know. that is that it? is a bell, and uh, it's called John Bald. It's called Baldessari's Red Menace because, oh. <laughs> <laughs> because because we love John Baldessari. Yeah, we love too. John Baldessari, <laughs> but uh, I thought he didn't like plastic art very much in the '70s. He really, you know, and I thought it would be funny. And I, I do like to have humor in my work, and so I thought that I would do a beautiful red bell and make it out of uh, the resin, clear and cast resin. Is it, can you see through it? Oh, absolutely. It's gorgeous. But the interesting thing is, I think, the hat trick. And you brought me, you brought me the book that tells all about it. Right. But tell us a little bit about the hat trick. Okay, well, Jack uh, Brogan and I were uh, having lunch one Friday, and he mentioned the fact that at uh, uh, Caltech, they've developed a process, or they're in the process of developing a process, where they can make steel objects, but it's actually clear and it looks like glass. It's as hard as steel, but it's, it's a glass-looking material. And I wanted to, and it got me thinking about, wouldn't it be fun to do to to scan Larry Bell's hat oh. and then have it made in glass so I can cross reference his famous cubes that he makes. And Larry Bell loves to wear hats. This is a really funny old <laughs> old photo of him and his hat and his walking stick. Yes. It's this is iconic this photograph. So the other thing then this whole book is about the process of doing the hat. Correct. But your latest work is what do you call them? Military rondel, military rondels, and uh, we're is this one correct? And basically, rondel is a, is an outgrowth of the French uh, Revolution. Napoleon's troops had the little ribbons in in, oh, in their hats, oh, oh. and then during World War One, the uh, uh, the French and the English uh, took that image and put them on the side of their aircraft, and that started a whole tradition of aircraft military aircraft with these rondelles. So they're painted on, these were painted on the sides of different types of planes? Airplanes, yeah. And what, what, what are the colors signifying? Okay, well this, this is Spain, this ah. is Serbia, this is, uh, let's see, red would be ch China, um, and Albania, and uh, you say China red. Were they, yes, were but, they from the, from the same period? Or no, were, all, through, uh, all through history I chose. And I chose the Chinese, uh, the red Chinese, because it was when they were occupied by the Japanese. Oh, and I, wanted, I didn't want to pick the ones that most people uh, identify with the countries. I wanted to do more obscure uh, images, designs. So what kind of materials do you use yourself in your studio now? I, I do everything. Um, <laughs> I haven't done stone, but I've, I do a lot of metals, and the Rondell series are uh, fiberglass with uh, metal but can you can you form those in fiberglass? Actually, well, no, I had to form it uh, by hand with a sculptor's foam. Oh, but, but you do that? You make I do the whole that. thing? I, I, do, I do the absolutely the whole thing. And then coloring it? I spray paint it myself, oh, and I, I do see. the whole process. I see. I've worked with Jack long enough to learn a lot of his tricks. Oh, I bet. Not even, not even this much of everything that he knows. And then, not even I know he knows so much. And then, how they have a stand in the back? Well, okay. This is, it, it, you. This is looking down. Oh, at I it. see. And basically, these are corner uh, pieces. I wanted to reference Malevich, and his uh, the oh. Russian Orthodox. You know, he did the painting in the corner that was referenced the Orthodox uh, church, church, really. Right, yeah. And uh, so I wanted to uh, these mount in the corner, and they also float on a fl on a wall. As so well. they could be either way. They either could way. John, thank you so much for coming today and well, bringing all this material. This, this went by so quick. Thank you for being <laughs> with us. And thank, thank you. Them. Thanks. I'm going to wave to you all out there for watching the Joan Quinn Profiles. We'll see you next time.